Videodrome is a movie from 1983 about a guy named Max Rin who runs Civic TV, a trashy television station specializing in violent material and softcore porn. Unsatisfied with his station's current lineup, Max is on the hunt for something that isn't so soft and will break through to a new audience. One day Max is introduced to Videodrome by one of his employees named Harlan. Videodrome is a plotless television show being broadcast out of Pittsburgh, which depicts the brutal torture and eventual murder of anonymous victims in a bizarre reddish-orange chamber. Believing this to be the future of television, Max orders Harlan to begin pirating the show. Early on in the movie, we meet Professor Brian Oblivion when Max is on a talk show defending his programming choices for Civic TV. Let's watch a short clip. Professor Oblivion, do you think erotic TV shows and violent TV shows lead to desensitization, to dehumanization? The television screen has become the retina of the mind's eye. Yes. That's why I refuse to appear on television, except on television. Of course, Oblivion is not the name I was born with. That's my television name. Soon, all of us will have special names. Names designed to cause the cathode ray tube to resonate. This character here, Brian Oblivion, is based on a real professor named Marshall McLuhan, who dedicated his career and his life to all things media. He was considered a media mogul and responsible for laying the groundwork for media theory with books like The Mechanical Bride, The Gutenberg Galaxy, Understanding Media, The Extensions of Man, The Medium is the Massage, and Inventory of Effects, just to name a few. His whole ideology was that man and media do, in fact, merge, and that television becomes a part of your brain. In a sense, this guy was aware of the Matrix, and he was trying to tell people about it before anyone ever conceptualized what a Matrix could be. He doesn't say we live in a computer-generated world or anything like that, but he did know all of the implications of the technology of his time and what was to come. For instance, he also wrote a book in the 60s called The Global Village, which basically predicted the internet and a time when people are no longer social but dependent on electronic means to communicate instantaneously. And we know that Brian Oblivion is based on Marshall McLuhan because David Cronenberg admits it on the Videodrome commentary. Of course, here we're introduced to Professor Brian Oblivion, who is based very much on Marshall McLuhan, the communications guru who became quite famous in the 60s and afterwards. There are several old Marshall McLuhan interviews and lectures floating around on the web. I'll highlight a few clips for you just so you can hear some of his words for yourself. The um, ordinary child of our culture is being educated, massaged by the TV form into a state of participation in all sorts of sensuous operations that the old visual culture carefully uh, refrained from and uh, kept distant from. In the electric world, the simultaneity of information is acoustic in the form that it comes from all directions at once. You hear from all directions at once. Electric information comes from all directions at once. And when information comes from all directions simultaneously, you are living in an acoustic world. Television brings the outside inside and takes the inside outside. The TV image uses the eye as an ear. With TV, the audience becomes the screen, not the camera. I'm concerned with effects of these forms on people, and they are involuntary insofar as they're unheated. Uh, you know, you, you can uh, put your finger in a buzz saw and uh, wonder where it went because you can't see the saw. Uh, if you don't pay any attention to the nature of buzz saw, you can lose uh, many fingers without even knowing where they went. Uh, we do that with media all the time. We've done it with all media up till now. So you see, it's not really hard to tell anyway. 
the television screen has become the retina of the mind's eye. With TV, the audience becomes the screen, not the camera. We'll get back to Brian Oblivion, a.k.a. Marshall McLuhan. For now, let's continue. In the same scene, we have a connection with, quote-unquote, the woman in the red dress. That's the character Nikki Brandt, played by Deborah Harry, the lead singer of Blondie. Like the woman in the red dress, she serves as a distraction. But don't you feel such shows contribute to a social climate of violence and sexual malaise? And do you care? Certainly I care. <laughs> I care enough, in fact, to give my viewers a, a harmless outlet for their, their fantasies and their frustrations. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a socially positive act. What about it, Nikki? Is it socially positive? Well, I think we live in overstimulated times. We crave stimulation for its own sake. We gorge ourselves on it. We always want more, whether it's tactile, emotional, or sexual. And I think that's bad. Then why did you wear that dress? That dress. <laughs> it's very stimulating. I admit it. I live in a highly excited state of overstimulation. Listen, I'd really like to take you out to dinner tonight. Her and Max start hanging out together after Max asks her out on the show. And during a night of watching Videodrome with each other, Max finds out that she's a sadomasochist and that Videodrome puts her in the mood. The part that sticks out to me about this scene is when they are having sex. Max's apartment transforms into the Videodrome room, hinting that what you see on the television becomes a part of you and your reality. Max wants to know more about Videodrome and the people behind it, so he starts asking around. One of his contacts informs him that Brian Oblivion can help him find out more about Videodrome, after warning him that Videodrome is dangerous and should be avoided. Max tracks down Oblivion's office to the Cathode Ray Mission, a mission where homeless individuals are provided food, shelter, and TVs. The interesting part about this is the name of the mission, Cathode Ray. From Cathode Ray Tube, the main component for making older box-style television screens work. This is emblematic for TV being a religion. Max discovers that the mission is run by Brian Oblivion's daughter, Bianca, with the goal of helping to bring about her father's vision of a world in which television replaces every aspect of everyday life. You think a few doses of TV are going to help them? Watching TV will help patch them back into the world's mixing board. Max lets Bianca know that he wants to speak with her father, and then he leaves. Later on, he receives a videotape from Professor Oblivion. Let's have a look. The battle for the mind of North America will be fought in the video arena. The video drone. The television screen is the retina of the mind's eye. Therefore, the television screen is part of the physical structure of the brain. Therefore, whatever appears on the television screen emerges as raw experience for those who watch it. Therefore, television is reality. And reality is less than television. Max. I'm so glad you came to me. I've been through it all myself, you see. Your reality is already half video hallucination. If you're not careful, it will become total hallucination. I had a brain tumor. And I had visions. I believe the visions caused the tumor and not the reverse feel the visions coalesce and become flesh, uncontrollable flesh. But when they removed the tumor, it was called Videodrome. Let's pause it right there for a second. I want to point out that in real life, Marshall McLuhan had a tumor in his head. It was successfully removed, but Marshall was never the same. He ended up with hypersensitive hearing and large gaps in his memory. 
It was said that he had to reread many of the books that he had studied early on. Anyway, let's move on with this scene. Shortly after Oblivion addresses Max, Max begins hallucinating. Nikki Brand is on the screen, and Max is uncontrollably drawn to her. Back at the mission, Bianca tells Max that these are side effects from having viewed Videodrome, which is in fact a malicious broadcast signal that causes the viewer to develop a malignant brain tumor. Her father, Brian Oblivion, helped to create it as part of his vision for the future, but when he found out that it was to be used for malicious purposes, he attempted to stop his partners, which used his own invention to kill him. In the year before his death, Oblivion recorded tens of thousands of videos, which now form the basis of his television appearances. Bianca sends Max away with a handful of videotapes to watch. As he watches one tape, holding a pistol, he scratches his stomach, where an almost vagina-like slit opens, into which his gun disappears. On the tape, Oblivion says this, there is nothing real outside our perception of reality, is there? Max is contacted by Videodrome's producer, the Spectacular Optical Corporation, an eyeglasses company that acts as a front for a NATO weapons manufacturer. The head of Spectacular Optical, Barry Convex, has been working with Harlan to get Max to broadcast Videodrome as a part of a crypto government conspiracy to morally and ideologically purge North America, giving fatal brain tumors to lowlifes fixated on extreme sex and violence. What I want to point out here is the Spectacular Optical Corporation itself. There is an actual secret society called the Great Enlightened Society of Oculists. They focus on sight as a metaphor for knowledge, and we see their marks today in things like the logo for CBS, where everything you see is BS. Also hints of this secret society in movies like They Live, where special pairs of glasses help you see the truth. And also, the highly Illuminati-themed Disney cartoon Gravity Falls. The Gravity Falls Zodiac has a pair of glasses on it, and these glasses can be seen in the show in one of the rooms of the Mystery Shack. Anyway, Barry says that they chose Civic TV for the first transmission of Videodrome signal because of its sleazy content and audience. Why would anybody watch a scum show like Videodrome? Barry then produces a pulsating VHS tape and puts it in Max's stomach cavity, essentially programming Max to kill certain people. Max has become a human VCR that will play out the program. This is symbolic of the power that television has over its viewers. Max pulls the gun back out of his stomach opening and the gun integrates itself with Max's hand. Max then goes and kills his partners at Civic TV. His next program is to kill Bianca Oblivion. He breaks into the mission, but hesitates when Bianca plays him Nikki's death scene on Videodrome. She was killed on the show, along with all those other people by Spectacular Optical Corporation. A flesh gun then emerges from the TV set and shoots him. A violent deprogramming, if you will. Bianca then inserts her own tape into Max's opening. With that, she reprograms him to go after the ones responsible for creating Videodrome in its current form. She tells him he is the video word made flesh. You've become the video word made flesh. I am the video word made flesh. Death to Videodrome. Long live the new flesh. Max 
Max then begins to follow his new orders, killing both Harlan and Barry. Afterwards, Max takes refuge and Nikki appears to him on another television screen. As Max sits on a filthy mattress, Nikki tells him that he has weakened Videodrome, but that, in order to completely defeat it, he has to leave the old flesh. The television then shows an image of Max shooting himself in the head with his gun hand, which causes the TV set to explode human intestines and organs onto the floor. Imitating what he has just seen on TV, Max says his final words, Long live the new flesh. And then he pulls the trigger. While Videodrome is completely exaggerated science fiction, its overall message rings even truer today than it did in 1983 when it was first released. With the advent of new technologies such as the internet, mobile devices, and various social medias, we are today, more than ever, surrounded by the signals of a real-world Videodrome. Its images and message can now reach us in a variety of ways, following us anywhere we go. While not as in-your-face and extreme as the movie's version of Videodrome, today's mass media still tap into these two primal urges that are difficult for humans to ignore. Sex and violence. This is what it's all about. Materialism, superficiality, the over-sexualization of society, and the destruction of family values. The Videodrome signal that causes everything from hallucinations and brain tumors is the constant conditioning that is exerted by mass media to force the world to accept a specific worldview, which is just as fake as a hallucination. In the Illuminati's Videodrome, the masses are constantly exposed to the values that need to be accepted, the mindset that needs to be adopted, and the symbolism that needs to be embraced. From mega rituals disguised as current events, to propaganda disguised as entertainment, TV viewers find themselves just like Max, with tapes inserted directly into them in order to program them to accept these things.